Howdy! Welcome to Aspire Mountain Academy. I am Professor Curtis, your instructor for this course in Introductory Statistics. In less than 10 minutes, this video provides additional practice using StatCrunch to perform hypothesis testing and construct confidence interval estimates for two population standard deviations or variances. Let's get started. Okay, for this mini lecture, we're going to look again at another example problem that we've seen before. This one looking at a study of, you know, a relationship between levels of lead in the blood and IQ scores. We've got the same seven stock questions that we're typically asked with these types of problems. The claim here is that the IQ scores have greater variation when the level of lead in the blood is low. So the low blood group, it, excuse me, the low lead level group is going to be the one that has the high is has the higher standard deviation, therefore has the higher variance, and therefore we're going to make it sample number one. Okay, remember that's the convention that we're going to use. The one with the higher standard deviation is going to have the higher variance, and that's the one that we use for group number one or sample number one. The first question we're asked is about our hypotheses, and so. The first thing we do when constructing that is think about the claim that's being made. Here the claim is that the IQ scores vary more with the low lead levels than with the high lead levels. And so the first population variance is going to be greater than the second population variance, which is the same thing as saying that this ratio is going to be greater than 1. Our null hypothesis, always by definition, a statement of equality. So we can simply write that out. Notice that this doesn't change no matter what the problem is. This is pretty standard that you're going to see for your null hypothesis. It pretty much stays the same. The alternative hypothesis typically uh, reflects the claim. We don't have any semblance of equality here, so we can just take that and directly adopt it for our alternative hypothesis. So we have a match between our claim and our alternative hypothesis. And that inequality signs, like an arrow pointing to the right, says we have a one-tail test on the right side of our distribution. The test statistic. We get the test statistic easily by going to StatCrunch. Go to Stat, Variant Stats, Two Samples with Summary. And there in the Options window, go ahead and enter your information in. Okay, keep in mind, we're not given any variances in the problem statement. The sample statistics table that they gave us just listed standard deviations. So we've got to square those numbers and put them in. And notice how I'm putting in all the digits. I'm not rounding it in any way. So I'm putting every digit that they give me and I calculate it out. I'm going to put every digit into those fields. Also notice that I'm putting the larger number here with the first sample. Okay, that's the convention that's used. And I get that so that my F, F stat, my F score, comes out correctly. When I hit compute, out comes my results window. The test statistic, as always, is found as the next to last number there in that table there in the results window. If I'm asked for the p-value, the p-value always next door to the test statistic. It's that last value. Just take it off the table and run with it. What will we do with the null hypothesis? Well, we're going to use the same criteria we've always used. Here's our critical region in our F distribution. So notice we have alpha equal to 5%. It's a one-tail test on the right. So our critical region or region of rejection is in the right tail of our distribution. 5% is the area of that, of that uh, tail. And so the boundary for that comes out to be 1.92. So 1.92 is that critical value. It's the boundary for our critical region or region of rejection. So if we're inside that tail, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. If we're outside, we're going to fail to reject. Go back to our option, or excuse me, our results window, and we can look at that p-value. The p-value is definitely less than our alpha, so we're inside the region of rejection. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. Notice we get the same thing if we use the test statistic. So 2.91 is 
is our test statistic. 2.91 puts us somewhere out here that's inside the tail of our distribution. We're inside the region of rejection, therefore we reject the null hypothesis. What then do we conclude from our hypothesis test? Well, by now you should be pretty familiar with that pattern. So <clears throat> we rejected the null hypothesis, so you should know what that means. You have a one-tailed test, you should know what that means. You put those two together and you should come out with answer option C. Again, make sure you understand where each of the parts of this conclusionary statement come from. We rejected the null hypothesis, so there is sufficient evidence. We now have a one-tailed test, so we support the claim. And then the rest of the, the statement just comes from a restatement of the claim itself. What is the appropriate confidence interval? Again, they're, they're leaving that up to you to figure out is it, is it 1 minus alpha or 1 minus 2 alpha? Well, going back to our options window, notice we're using 1 minus 2 alpha for our confidence level because there's, there's a match between our claim and our alternative hypothesis. So to account for the two populations that we're testing, we want to have 1 minus 2 alpha for our confidence level. We press compute and out comes our results window, and we're going to get, to get our upper and lower bounds for our confidence interval right there off the table, just like we've always done. And you can see them listed here at the end, just like we've always seen them. Next, we're asked, what do you conclude from comparing these results? Well, the number we're looking for, again, is 1. So is 1 inside or outside the confidence interval? Here, 1 is going to be outside the confidence interval. And so, therefore, we conclude that there is a difference in the mean IQ score between the two groups. Okay. Furthermore, okay, all the values in the confidence interval are greater than 1. And because all the values in the confidence interval are greater than 1, that means this number here on top, is going to always be greater than the number on the bottom. So the variance we see for the first group or the first sample is always going to be greater than the variance for the second group. And remember what these correspond with. Remember the first group, okay, is the low lead level group, and the second group is going to be the high lead level group. That's how it was defined at the, at the start of the problem. So that means the IQ scores from the low lead level group are always going to vary more than the scores from the, the high lead level group. Again, this is the same conclusion that we got out of the formal hypothesis testing. So it's just as reliable, the confidence intervals are just as reliable as the formal method of hypothesis testing for making conclusions about a claim. And that brings us to the end of this mini-lecture. I hope you found it helpful. You can find more mini-lectures for this and other courses at AspireMountAcademy.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.